Hi and welcome to this quick tour review. This time around we'll be looking at a product from Banggood which they donated to me for review. It is the FY6800 two-channel direct digital synthesis arbitrary waveform signal generator 14 bits of resolution 250 mega samples a second uh, DAC sine wave square wave pulse frequency meter includes VCO modulation and has up to 60 megahertz output. It was delivered in the traditional Banggood bag, but inside the bag was a box, which was really nice to see because a lot of their stuff arrives in kind of rough shape because it's handled so much in shipping. So let's take this guy out and have a look. Inside the package, the unit comes with uh, two sets of alligator probes, 150 ohm cable, USB A to B cable, power cord for the US, which is how I ordered it, and a card. Uh, saying Fieldtech is the company that manufactured it with a link to their website to download the user guide and the unit itself was protected in bubble wrap inside the box which was nice and it arrived looks like uh, in perfect condition. This arbitrary signal generator is feature packed as you will see lots and lots of options and adjustments and controls including ridiculously low frequency resolution adjust and equally small amplitude adjust. Um, plus or minus 10 volt DC bias on the output. Although note that at the highest frequencies, the output is somewhat limited. Um, phase adjustment, two completely independent channels. Uh, you've got frequency scanning, burst output, VCO control, modulation counter, a built-in counter, uh, arbitrary waveform editing function requiring their software. Incidentally, uh, when you go to their website, I'll show you how you can find the software to download because the English version is a little the bit difficult. They give you opens up a page that's uh, a lot in Chinese, mostly in Chinese, um, and Google offers the option to translate. But if you don't want to do that, there's a small world icon in the upper right-hand corner if you click on it. You can select English and it'll take you to an English version of their website. And here you can download all the versions of the software uh, in English for all of their products. Like the FY8600 and it'll let you download it. So I am always wary of software from overseas or unknown sources that I'm not very familiar with. And uh, so I always do online virus scanning with a metavirus scanner. And meta scanners actually check multiple sites for viruses uh, and multiple people's software. So the main software um, comes up perfectly clean. This is the software to edit the waveforms and it checks on all these different uh, uh, virus scanning software and uh, malware scanners. However, this is the installer for the serial driver to interface with the back and it did pop up two of these. Now, neither of these are necessarily definitive, but uh, I've got to say that I would prefer it to show up none, so I recommend you try this on a computer that uh, is not your primary computer where you do your accounting or whatnot. There is a hardware power switch on the back, so here's powering up the unit on the first time. Looks like it ignores the soft power on the front and comes up powered on. Starting with simple functions, you have in the waveform menu, it lets you change what the output waveform is going to be, of which there are a boatload of pre-built waveforms in the system and they show you a sample of what it looked like on the LCD screen. Um, let's go back to uh, sine wave here. You have frequency control and these buttons over here let you select um, what, di what digit you're adjusting so if I went up to here I could adjust right up to 60 megahertz. Um, here is amplitude. Interestingly enough, the amplitude is limited at 5 volts when you're at 60 megahertz, but if I go back here and take it down to, uh, let's go over to 100 kilohertz, the amplitude will now go up to 20 volts, which is interesting and really handy. So let's leave it here at 5. And uh, 
uh, you have offset adjust right here, which allows you to offset the waveform, uh, DC offset or DC bias. You have duty cycle, which doesn't apply to sine waves, and phase control, which does apply to sine waves. And the phase control can be used to adjust between the two channels, and you can make either channel primary adjuster by just selecting the appropriate button. Um, let's go look at what these features, how they uh, impact uh, what the scope sees. So let me put up a couple megahertz here and uh, pop up to the scope. So here is frequency adjust. Now let me set the voltage down to two and a half. So that's you can see the cursors right there. Now, when I adjust frequency, you can see that the amplitude drops. That's not great. So, even though it claims the amplitude's the same as you go higher frequency, the amplitude's actually being attenuated. And I assume that's because of a post low pass filter. Um, as long as you know that going in, you can compensate for it, but it's not ideal. Uh, here is the voltage offset adjust. So, there's your DC bias we were talking about. And phase only applies between channels, so it doesn't really apply here. Next up, we can go to modulated waveform. So you have frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, phase shift keying, I'm not, burst, AM, FM, and phase modulation. And you can either use the external AC or an external source completely. Oh, external source AC coupled, DC coupled, or channel 2. So right now um, we're on channel 2 uh, with FSK and so here I'm uh, adjusting the frequency on uh, the frequency shift key. And since it's hopping back and forth, the scope is triggering on it at different times. So you're actually seeing the signal overlaid. It also supports a sweep function. And you can pick the start frequency and the stop frequency. Right now it's going from 10 kilohertz to 60 megahertz with a transition time of one second right down here. Uh, you can do it logarithmic or linearly and stop this, the OK button starts and stops. You don't need to just do frequency, you can also do amplitude sweep, which is really handy. And you can do DC offset and duty cycle, and that would again apply to something like a square wave, not a sine wave. Um, also has a voltage controlled oscillator with external voltage control or internal and it also has a frequency counter uh, where you can take the same signal and feed it right back in or an external signal and it will tell you what the frequency is. Here's channel 2 being fed back into the counter as you can see it's measuring 10 kilohertz which is what is being sent out of that channel. I made channel 2 primary and we shift the frequency up to 210 kilohertz. Go back here to counter and there we are. So all in all a lot of really nice features on this unit. Uh, it also has on the back uh, external trigger in, VCO in for the VCO control. Um, it also has sync in and out where you can daisy chain a bunch of these together to have them all controlled and synchronized together. Uh, it also has USB connection for the arbitrary generation and TTL out. So at max output frequency, uh, you would ex there's only four samples roughly per sine wave and they're relying on filtering to generate a good sine wave so you would expect to see harmonics. So when I turn the output on, 60s down over here right there 5998 and so you are seeing harmonics all the way up but it's nowhere near as bad as I'd expect actually 120 so that's even harmonics of the primary 190 so roughly three times roughly four times um, it isn't terribly spectrally pure at the tie-in which you wouldn't expect there's the output off and there's bleed through from 
the inside uh, from other circuitry. That's the device turned off. That's the device powered off. So even the standby oscillator has got a little something. I do have the second channel turned off. So there's probably some internal clock down over around 80 megahertz, I'm guessing. <laughs> and 250 mega samples a second, I would kind of expect the 250 megahertz clock too which is right there. Yeah, that's probably the internal clock for the, sa the sample clock. So a lot of that makes it the output. But overall, you know, this was a hundred and something bucks as opposed to several thousand from Tektronix or Sigilant. Uh, it's still a pretty darn good deal. Four screws and the top comes off. Uh, they have normal AC in, which is really handy, and a separate switching supply, which is really smart. Um, typically, you want to keep switching supplies as far away from signal generation as possible if it's analog uh, because these things radiate like crazy which you know is always a problem um, we did see a few issues with the clock frequency of this board showing up on the outputs um, but since that's outside the frequency range they say the unit works at that's probably not such a huge deal uh, just be aware of it also, the harmonics, the higher frequency harmonics are not attenuated hardly at all, and so that also could be an issue. So just know that if you're using it outside the frequency range that the spec that, that, that could be a problem. Um, they used epoxy fiberglass PC boards for their main PC board. The power supply is someone else, and it's uh, paper phenolic, which is not great. Um, but the layout's nice. Uh, they did use uh, ground shielding all over the PC board to isolate traces. You can see uh, even uh, equidistant lines so that you can keep phase relationships correct. Uh, when you place traces on the board at high enough frequencies that if you're concerned about things, the phase relationship between two signals, you have to have the trace length identical to compensate because the actual length on the board actually affects the output phase relationship. Um, so they did a really nice job. It's all surface mount, so it should be fairly reliable. And uh, I think overall it's a pretty nice uh, unit, especially for 120 bucks. I mean, if you want to spend a few grand on a Hewlett Packard or a with Sigilant or a uh, Tektronix, you know, you'll get a much better unit, but you're getting what you pay for. Uh, if you're a home hobbyist, this is a really good deal. Uh, the software they give, you don't need to load the serial driver for Windows 10. It goes online and gets it from Microsoft's site, which is the one that... Uh, flagged a couple of the virus checkers so uh, you can just hook this up so I loaded the control software and I guess you never know if there's malicious code um, as far as like trying to send data off your computer and whatnot um, but sort of trusting it on this computer that I don't have much on that's important um, you've got full control over all the channels including sweep start and stop and you can set all the frequencies um, you also can do the arbitrary waveform here, and I just drew one with a pen. This is a pen interface uh, laptop, and uh, I just drew that waveform, sent it over. There it is showing up there, and there it is on the scope. It was that easy. You can send it via, but you can make it by drawing, or you can make it by upsetting, uploading data or text. So it's pretty straightforward. All in all, pretty darn good. By and large, uh, this thing's pretty handy. Um, it's got a, more features than you can shake a stick at. It's got a built-in power supply instead of a wall wart, which is a huge plus. Uh, two channels, a 60 megahertz sine wave, a lot lower frequency for the uh, other uh, generated waveforms, but uh, pretty handy. External uh, VCO control. Uh, does modulated waveforms, does sweeps in voltage and time, and... Uh, frequency so pretty amazing has a frequency counter built in all in all i give this a huge thumbs up especially for the price thanks for watching hope to see you next time